So I'm really excited to do this video because I've gone through several different techniques on hand embroidery and now I'm going to do one on fancy flowers and I think these are so much fun. So let's go ahead and get started and take care of these fancy flowers and let me show you how I put them together and hopefully you'll pick up something or see a technique you like. So let's get started. Okay, so let's begin our fancy flowers. The first stitch we're going to do is called the Lazy Daisy. This is a really quite simple flower. It's made with a detached chain stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Now I've marked out a couple of different flowers here. The first one I'm just showing you is I used my Cricut washable fabric pen and I just made five little lines here to give me a guide so I know where to place my petals. So I'm just going to come up in the center of that flower and like a chain stitch, I'm going to go right back down in the same place or right next to it. Now before I pull that thread all the way through, I'm going to bring my needle up at the end of my petal, capture that loop, and then bring everything up. And I would say bring it tight, but you want kind of a nice loopy look here, so not overly tight. And then all you're going to do is capture that loop by coming right on the other side of it. Very, very simple. And then what you do is you just come right back to center and move on to your next petal. So you come right back down by your, your current loop, bring your needle up, at the end of your petal. You could actually just capture that just to make sure you're going to get catch your loop there and bring that down. Whoop. You know what I didn't mean to do is put a twist in it. Let's undo that twist. Now you could have a twist. It's not that you can't, but you might want to make sure it's consistent, either twisted or not twisted. So, for the sake of being consistent, we will not twist it. Bring that down, and then capture your loop. So we'll go ahead and do that for the next three petals. If you'd like, you can come in and finish that sweet little flower with, I don't know, maybe just a nice little French knot in the middle of it. There you go. You have just a beautiful little flower. Now I'm going to make another Lazy Daisy, but I'm going to do it just with a, an optional method. So I, I'm going to come up in the center. I'm going to just make a couple little details here, a couple little French knots or something. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go out to the end of the petal. Now you could do this with just a simple single stitch, or you could do what I'm going to do here and make a little double stitch. Nice two little stitches side by side. And I'm doing two because I'd actually like it to show up a little more. So that's actually, this is called a seed stitch when you have two little stitches side by side like that. I don't know if you can see them, but there's, there's two little parallel stitches, quite small. Now I'm going to come over here to the next place where I'm going to put a petal. I'll do two more stitches. Each stitch, they're laying side by side, and each stitch, if you imagine that this is your center, is coming directly out from the center, and it's running vertical on that same vertical line to, to the center. So it would be, you know, this vertical 
the, the vertical changes, if that makes sense. Okay, now I've threaded my needle with another color. This is color 718. Again, that's DMC floss. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and finish this Lazy Daisy flower. And what I'm doing now, again, the French knots were just optional. You can make as many petals as you'd like. But what I'm going to do is bring my thread up. Now, instead of just going back down, so this is one way to avoid having to do the loop if you want, I'm going to go through and just thread underneath these two stitches, or it could be a single stitch, but I'm going to bring my needle through the stitches but not the fabric. And then I just come back over and put it right back where I started. Okay, so some variations and two options on Lazy Daisies. Okay, this next flower I want to show you is called a woven pico. I shouldn't say flower. Flower petal, or you can use it for anything else where this shape would work. So it doesn't have to be a flower stitch, really, but that's how I'm going to use it today. So I've loaded up my needle with color number 444, and I also am going to use a pin, just a nice um, sewing pin. I've got my flower petals drawn out, and you can see that it's got a nice kind of wide flower here. I'm going to take my pin and put it right at the tip of that petal. I'm going to bring it under my work and pop up the end of it right up here where the center of my flower is. So now I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to come up on one side of my petal. I'm going to bring it down on the other side of my petal, but as that loop's coming down, I'm going to catch it on the top of that pin. Okay, so I've got it coming up from here, going around this pin and coming down. Now I'm going to bring my thread up right here in the center, right next to that pin. I'm going to also bring that around the head of my pin, right on top of the other thread. But now I'm going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to come underneath this side, over the thread in the middle and underneath the second side. Let's make sure I get underneath everything. Pull that through and tuck it up nice and tight. Now I'm going to begin weaving all the way down to the base of my petal. So now that I've just come up from underneath, I'm going to go over, then under, then over. And then just bring that yarn up and bring it a little towards the top. I definitely want to have a little tension. Now I'm going to go under, over, under. So you just continue to weave it all the way up. And you can use your needle to kind of push everything together and tighten up those strands before you pull through the next stitch. So now I've already, I'm at an under position, so I'm going to go over, under, over. Then back to under, over, under. Push all that up, give that a little nice, you know, adjustment to the tension. And just keep it nice and even there. So don't just end on a center. Make sure whatever you do, you end on one of the outer sides. Let me put one on here and then see if we can firm that up anymore or if we're done. Yeah, I think I can go ahead and pass that over. So we just went over, under, and then over again. And I'm under right here, so I'm gonna, just going to come over. And I'm going to secure that stitch right. I'm just going to loop over and secure that by bringing this all down. 
So now this is the fun part, the big stitch reveal. Go ahead and take that needle out. And now you have this wonderful stitch that's actually just loose. And you can leave it loose if you want to have something that just looks, um, you can imagine using this for something like a sunflower with a lot of petals in the center. You can have it be warped looking. Or you can actually take your thread from behind and come up at any point and you can secure it either all the way down so that it's down tight so you can come up right here and catch that loop and secure it or you see where my needle is I can bring it just a little closer take that needle and bring it through the end of your petal catch a loop and then just make a little you know, tiny loop. You're just catching it, right? And bring that back down. Now you have this great petal with some dimension to it. And then you just continue and make your petals everywhere else. And then you can fill in your center with whatever you want. So that is the woven pico. Okay, so I'm going to show you also another pico petal that you can do and it's it's not the woven pico it's just a pico stitch a standard pico and my base is going to be here my point is going to be close to me so that i can work up the petal so i'm going to go ahead and get that pin where i want it you should be able to see that there we go and i'm going to take my thread i'm using a beautiful color number 720 and I'm going to take my thread, I'm going to bring it way down here. I'm going to make this a nice long petal. And bring my petal, I just, I start it the exact same way. And I just bring that pin up and I bring it up to the head of the pin. But this time, instead of making a center stitch and weaving back, I'm going to just come from the, the base towards me and I'm going to just start on the opposite side. So I came up here, down here, I'm going to come up again next to where I started. Now I'm basically going to go over my thread and then under. I'm sorry, um, I'm coming over the top here so I want to slide under my thread and then over the opposite side again. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go underneath this thread and over the top. You know, so you're alternating basically. And I'm going to get a couple stitches on here and then I'll snug everything down a little bit and then we'll be off and running. Now it's going to look all loose and bumpy, but look at as I tighten that up, it does start to develop and starts to look really nice. So it's okay, just kind of keep working it and it will get much improved as you go. You don't want to have so much tension, I think it's a big mistake here. When you put too much tension on it, you end up with this little, I mean it's going to be super skinny, it's just going to go around the pin, right? So you don't want to work so hard at bringing it together that you end up with this little skinny strand. It's okay to have, see the fullness that we're getting down here? So it's okay to have that looseness, but if you wait till you get almost done, then it just doesn't quite gather up as nicely. And it's a long petal, so we're just going to put a lot of these on.
Okay, as you can see, that took a lot of stitching to get that filled in, but isn't that nice once it is? Now, when I lift that pin out, I've got a nice pico that is not connected again, but I now have my tail coming out of the end of my petal. So again, I could either lay it right down where I want it, or I could lift it up a little bit and give it a little dimension. And then just basically lock that in. There you go. So you've got another dimensional one if you want it. Now you could have laid it flat as well, and you could even lock it down if you wanted it to have kind of a push to the side look. You could even come up, just come front and center. So if you're designing your flower to have kind of leggy petals and want them to look a little scraggly, just pick that up and lay it down and nobody will ever know that that's a stitch that's holding it together. So there you go, there's a couple different picots, the woven pico and the regular pico, and then I've attached it at the end, but I also swerved it over a little bit and did an attachment here. Okay, I'm gonna come right underneath our picots here and show you another little flower, and this is the, I don't know, I call it kind of a spiderweb rose. I don't know what the official name is, but I'm gonna start by coming up in the center and I've got, it doesn't matter really what color thread because you better cover all of this up. <laughs> so I'm going to start with this green and I'm going to make, and I really didn't mean to make everything have five spokes. It just kind of worked out that way. But I'm going to make, it, whatever it is, make it uneven on this one. It can be five, seven, nine. Five is going to be plenty. I'm making five little spokes here. That all meet back in the middle. And they need to be about the same size. You could do it with the same color. I'm just doing it so you can see these separately from the actual weaving that we're going to do. So next I'm going to take color number 601 and load my thread on my needle. Okay, now I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to actually double up my thread. And that'll just spin it up faster. Hopefully I've got enough thread on here. We'll find out soon enough. You can always add more though. Okay, so now that I've got my thread ready to go, I'm going to come up real close to the center here on my little pinwheel. My little spider web. Now, I'm going to start where I go over this line and then under and over. And I'm going to repeat over and under and go around and around and around. The thing is, the reason you need them to be uneven is every time you get around a full circle, you're going to end up alternating. So I'm going to go over this, but now I'm going to come under where I started, where last time I was over it. And we just keep going around and around. And you want to make sure that none of that green shows. So it's okay to tighten that up around the center. Now, you can see here, I did a pretty good job making four of those even, and look at that, I left one out. That's a bit of a mistake. You really do want to keep those legs even, but I could just pop a little leaf in there and cover it up. So if you really run into a little problem because you just didn't quite cover one, just make a little leaf. Okay, now I've drawn another guide here, and I'm going to show you the petal stitch, or the petal chain stitch, I think sometimes it's called. And I've got 
more thread loaded up. This is color 775, just a pretty light blue. We're going to finish this one off with a cute little bead in the center as well, just for fun. So I'm going to come up in my center. And I've given myself two little guides here. So um, roughly, I, I'm not overly concerned about staying on this center guide. I think I made it a little bit small. But I'm going to have six petals, and I've got little dots here that kind of bled a little, so I don't know if you can see them. But toward each dot, I'm going to start with a chain stitch. So I'm going to go to, to this top petal first, and what I'm going to do is make a chain. So I come right back down by my initial stitch, and I go ahead and come up. I'm just going to go outside of that circle. I want enough room in my chain to work my loops, and you'll see in just a minute what I mean. So I'm coming a little bit outside of that circle, making a nice little chain. Okay, so you've got your chain stitch on. Now this is a stitch that's also going to use a pin. So take your pin and put it at the top of your petal. Poke it through, and then you can bring it down, just straight down. You can go right past that center if you want. You just need to have something here to capture your thread. So this side down here is not important, this side is. And what you're gonna do is make six loops around that pin, but each time you make a loop, so I'm gonna bring that thread around the head of the pin, then I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna put a stitch through my chain, but only that, that right side. Depends on which way you're looping your circle, but I'm gonna go from left to right. So I'm just gonna come in and put a stitch through my right side. So that's one loop. We're gonna just repeat that five more times. Okay, so once you have your six strands on here, you can take out your pin, set it aside, you're going to need it for the next petal. You can come up on your loop inside of it, so you're basically making another half stitch here, and then you're going to capture that loop. Go ahead and just tighten that one up. Make sure your petal's in the shape that you want. And then you just lock that petal down by stitching through the back. And you can just come in and kind of adjust your shape a little bit. It's kind of a fluffy stitch, it's okay to have it just loose and rambling. So now you're just going to come down. Now what you want to do at this point though is stay in order. So you don't go over here and cross on this side and then you know go random. You're going to come around in the order of the petal either clockwise or counterclockwise but stay in the same direction. Okay, you can see that we've got all six petals on here. You know, this is a circle. I could have even put a seventh petal in here. It would have tightened up and overlapped a little more. But you can choose how many petals you want to put on your flower. And then I'm just going to, you could put French knots in the center, but I just thought it'd be fun to show you one little embellishment idea where you can just take either a group of beads or a single bead. I have just a single big red um, circular bead. And I'm just going to pop that in the middle of the flower. I thought that'd be pretty. Now typically, if you can get your needle back through it a second time, I'll lock it down and then I'll tie it off. And there you go, the petal chain stitch. Or the petal stitch, one or the other. Okay, this next flower stitch I want to show you. I actually showed you how to do the stitch on our knotted stitches, but I'm going to show you how to put this stitch together and make a little rose. And it's one of my favorites. It's called the bouillon stitch, and we're making a bouillon stitch rose. So what you're going to do is come up with your thread, 
And I am using color number 899, just a pretty rose pink color. Bring your thread up and you're going to take your thread, now it's coming out of the fabric, you're going to take your needle and bring your needle into the fabric and then back out right by where you started your stitch. Do not pull your thread through just yet. You're going to take your thread and you're going to wrap the needle and you can either lift it from behind and you're going to just wrap as many wraps as you want to put on there. Um, what I want is I want a little bulk to my stitch so if I put more wraps than I have space for here it will raise it and if I put just enough it'll lay flat but still rolled and coiled so I want to raise this a little bit so you can either hold your your needle from behind or you can come in and hold it I don't know one finger or the other but just if you hold that tip of that needle then every time you put a loop on it slides below your finger and it can't come back out so that's just a nice way to do it too. So that's two wraps and just keep wrapping in the same direction. Three, four, five, six. I think I'll put seven on there because I just made a little tiny space and that's about double. Now I'm gonna hold all of this while I pull my thread through. If your thread won't go through, then give your needle a little spin in one direction or the other, whichever way loosens it up a little bit and it'll come right through. Hold it until you bring it all the way down. And then what you'll see here is I have all my wraps, but I've been pulling it in the same direction that I wrapped. And my thread actually came from here. So now I'm just gonna bring that over and then I can tighten that the rest of the way. And I just grab the top of the bullions and tighten that down. I know it's a little hard to see. So basically I've got this great little petal here made with this wrapped thread. To finish that stitch, you just bring your needle right back down where you started. So I've just made this cute little stitch that has a little shape to it. Now, I did put just a little arc on here. I could leave that alone, it's just fine. But if I really wanted to emphasize the arch, I could come up right on the inside of that arch and basically wrap that stitch and lock it down. So I just bring it over and then, then lock it down. And because you already have a bunch of wraps, it just it looks like one more wrap. You can't even tell that there's a stitch there. So that's a nice little start to a bullion rose. So now I'm gonna come up. And let's see, I think I'll just come right here inside my stitch I'm going to go in the same direction basically, but I'm going to wrap it and then arch it a little this way. So I'll come right underneath here, come right back where I started, and then I'm going to just hold that needle while I wrap that, and it's about the same size stitch, so I think I'll just do about seven wraps again. And don't, try not to wrap it too tight, just make it snug. But like I said, if you're having trouble bringing that through, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but if my needle wasn't coming through, I could just spin it a little bit and that tends to loosen those wraps if you spin the right direction and then bring that through. Hold everything, that's the trick to this stitch. Hold everything down while you bring your thread through and then reverse sides and keep holding it down, you know, kind of scrunch it all up before you lock it in. And I'm just going to bring that right up underneath that other bud side, our center, rose center. This is the little center part. Okay, so I've got two little stitches there. Now I'm just going to start going in a wrapping fashion and adding more stitches until I get it as big as I want it to. So to do that, you have to think about just the direction you're going in. I think I want to bring a wrap that sort of closes this right here. So I'm going to come up on this side. Don't worry about going over the top, again, because you can always arc it and lock it down. So I'm going to come right here on this side. 
and come right back where I started. And remember, don't pull your needle through. Hold on to your needle. I think that's just the easiest way that I've found to do it. So you can bring your needle, you can bring it almost all the way through, just don't pull it through. Lift it up and hold it with your finger, and then you can start wrapping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Let's do fourteen. So once you bring that through, again, if you have any trouble bringing it, you shouldn't, but if you do, you just twist in a direction that loosens it a little, and then look, that thread just comes right through. Bring it till it's snug, and then you can kind of hold on to that. Hopefully I can show you now that there's more stitches. You can just keep bringing that through and kind of holding it until you get it locked down. It's a little hard to show that on camera. So now you've got that nice stitch. Starting to get a real pretty swirl pattern on there. Tighten that down, and then that's going to sit just fine, so I don't need to lock it in place. I'm not worried about that one. Now I'm going to come over around this side. Actually, I'm going to come up, sorry, behind that petal because I'm coiling, you know, kind of twirling them around. Then I'm going to cross over to this side. To make that next stitch. Leave that needle in, lift it up, and then start coiling. That was seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So as you go around, you keep making them a little bigger. So I'm going to hold that down and pull it through. Again, if I tightened up too much, spin the needle to loosen it. Don't ever let, let go of these threads. That just makes kind of, gets kind of messy. So you just want to maintain some control. So I'm holding that down. I think I've got a pretty good angle where you can see that. Holding that down with my fingers pulling this through, and then just following through. Once it's down here, I, you know, I'm not as worried. I can come in and I can tighten that up. It's just when it's still kind of full on the needle and you haven't locked it in yet that it's a bit of a problem. So go ahead and uh, come in and lock your stitch. As you're starting to make bigger loops on here or, or bulking up the loops, they can lift a little bit on you. If that's going to stay in place, which I feel like that will, Again, I don't need to worry about locking it down, but if it was kind of floppy and locking, you know, lifting up and kind of flipping over like that, that's when I would go ahead and just take a stitch somewhere in the center. And you can see a little rose starting to develop here, and then you would just lock that down. These little bullion roses are so pretty. They're so dimensional. Really not difficult to do at all, but they just look fantastic. So, just like we did before, I'm going to come up right alongside my stitch so I get just a hint of overlap. I'm going to cross all the way over to the other side of my rows and then come back up. You can see you're just rotating your directions here. So I'm going to bring my finger under here. I think this one will work. It's a little easier when you're not trying to film at the same time. You get these strange hand angles. If I just had my hoop out, I could just turn the hoop, but I've decided to have it um, held. And I wasn't counting there, so we'll put a couple more on. So I don't know how many that was, but <clears throat> this is my space, and this is how many loops I have. So I know I have a little more than that space. I'll put a few extras just in case and then hold on to all of that and pull that needle through. So 
So you can see here, I've got my loose strand at the end. Just grab it again and just tighten that down. Now that one seems to want to lift over, so I am going to lock that one down. So first I'll lock the stitch. Always lock the stitch first before you go back and lock it in the center. So we'll do that one more time. This is going to be a nice big bullion stitch. Bring that across and start wrapping. Now I'm lifting my needle up from underneath, my hands underneath the hoop here. But with this many stitches, it just gets too hard for those to stay. So I just find that having your finger there, it holds them on the needle for you. So that's a pretty good amount. This is the space we need to cover is from here to right here behind that pedal. So let's do just a couple more loops there. Control the top of that. Spin that a little, loosen it up. Oh, come on, baby. There we go. Definitely had to give that one a spin get it loose. All right, grab that in, tighten it down. And I'm just going to lock that in. And I think that's going to stay right where it needs to. So that is a bullion stitch rose. Isn't that adorable? One of my favorites. I think they're so pretty. Okay, so I've got one bonus stitch for you, and that is a cast-on stitch. And I'm going to go back to my little bullion rose and add a little outside stitch to this that kind of opens up the petals of the rose, and I'm using the cast-on stitch to do it. So what I'm going to do is I've threaded my needle with just a slightly lighter pink color. It's number 776. Obviously, I like that one. I'm using it up. And what I'm going to do is, a lot like the bullion stitch, I'm going to come in and bring my needle up where I'm starting my stitch. Then I'm going to come through around where I'd like to finish and come back up and bring my needle out and leave it out just like bullion. If I can get it going, there we go. I'm going to leave my needle out. Now this stitch reminds me of doing tatting. If you've ever done that, I haven't done any videos on that yet, but I will be. So subscribe if you want to see more of my videos because I will have a whole bunch of different crafts coming. So what you're going to do with this stitch, it's a little complicated. Let me bring this one down and this out of the way. So you're going to, I like to kind of lift up the needle from behind. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to lift from behind. I'm going to hold, lift it up as I bring each stitch on. I think that's going to be easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from behind the stitch, loop it on my finger, and bring it onto the needle. Now, if you look at where that stitch is, I'm sorry there's a pink flower right behind it, makes it a little complicated, but my thread is coming over the needle, under, and then inside of that loop, and I'm going to lock that down. Now, you could just continue to go in the same direction. 
that's the cast on stitch. You're making little loops on the needle first. But with um, tatting, you could actually change the direction of that stitch. So the loop just changed directions a little bit and you make what's called a, uh, in macrame, it's called a lark's head stitch. So it's sort of like that. So again, I'm gonna make the loop in one direction Um, sorry, let's you come from underneath, come towards you, and this the thread will always be on the inside of that loop, but it's either going to come out of the bottom or come out of the top. So that's the difference. So I'm going to back this needle up and try and show you that again because it can be a little complicated. We'll take all three stitches off. My needle's still in there. So I have zero stitches on here right now. Let's do this again. I'm lifting, I'm not lifting up my needle. I'm taking my finger under the thread, bringing it a little towards me and making a loop. With that loop, the thread's coming out of the fabric over the, the re, um, over the thread that's coming back. So it's going over around my finger and the thread that's coming back and then making the loop is going under that thread. And then I just kind of pick up the edge of that needle and place that on the needle. That's one direction. Now I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. And basically I've got the thread coming out of the needle over, my loop is still on the inside edge closest to the, flat, to the starting point but it's coming out of the top now instead of out of the bottom. And when you make that loop, you make a little larkspur knot here. So it's important to, huh, I don't even have the muscle memory yet to make sure I'm doing the right direction. I just have to watch every stitch. But what happens is when you do enough of these, you start to get what I just mentioned. You start to get muscle memory and you'll start to just kind of automatically do it. That's what happens with tatting when I'm doing needle tatting. It becomes very easy to go in one direction and then the opposite direction and then one direction and then the opposite direction. So it's a little complicated and this could take a, a few passes before you get it. So just get a needle and thread out and start practicing. So we'll do it again. I've got the thread coming under and towards me and then the thread going over and away from me and then under and towards me and over and away from me but still always on the inside that's the the key okay so you're making a tatting stitch on your needle that you're going to basically tat around this rose I'm going to have to think about it every time I put a stitch on, so just you can bear with me, laugh along with me, and we'll learn together. So tuck that down a little bit. I want to get a couple more stitches on here. Okay, so one more under, one more over. I don't know why I call them under and over, but... One more, that's, I guess because it's under and over. I think that one's... Okay, so I've got about mm, two, four, about eight of those stitches on here, or double stitches. So um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the double stitches. So now that these stitches are on here, just like a bullion stitch, I'm gonna bring my needle through all of that, hold on to the stitches, let that thread draw through. And again, once you hit that peak, you're gonna bring all of that to the outside. But I want my knots to be, I like the knots on the outside edge. So I'm gonna bring my needle through here, just so they line up pretty. By doing that, I've got the the knots all coming on this outside edge. Tighten that down. And then look at that gorgeous stitch. 
and then just like a bullion stitch again you just lock it down so everything about it is similar to the bullion stitch except you're making these little um, overcast knots now I've seen the overcast where they just stitch everything in the same direction I like that and it's simple it's a little easier than what I'm showing you the only challenge is it it starts to make this have a twist in it and it doesn't lay as nice so I just like that this lays so nicely so I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that a couple more times and go around our rows and give it some outer petals basically and um, give you a couple more examples and I think I won't speed this up because it is a little tricky so that way you can watch along and see what I'm doing so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go in the same direction so what that means is I want to come from underneath this stitch because I do want a little bit of that overlap happening and it'll take about mm, three or four I'm, I'm hoping just three little outer stitches so one that comes to here and then from here to here and going around the outside okay so I went ahead and finished two more stitches here and where we left off so you could see that finished work and so you can see here we've got the petals all coming around you've got your bullion stitch in the center and the outside is a cast on stitch and I did it and in an alternating fashion more like tatting so if you liked this you might like to learn tatting as well stick around and subscribe so when those videos come out you'll be able to see them and I hope you enjoyed these fancy flower stitches they're really some beautiful things that you can do and work with